Well, hello everyone. This is, once again, your boy, Apostle, Prophet, and Success Coach, Eddie Tate, bringing you back to another exhilarating broadcast tonight and uh, coming here to encourage you to be all you can be and that you would understand that it is who God's will for you to walk in the realm of success. And we are on the road to success. Amen. I just like to thank God for all of y'all that will come on all of you watching by YouTube. And uh, we, we're just looking for some awesome things to uh, just come forth tonight. And uh, I want to thank God tonight. And so we just thank God tonight for another broadcast. All right. And tonight, you know, we, 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 we've been talking about change and we've been talking about uh, new seasons and talking about preparing for the homecoming season. Let me share something with you. It is insane to keep doing the same things that you've been doing and thinking you're going to get some different results. And, you know, that's what we've been talking about. We've been talking about change. Seasons bring on change. Seasons bring on change. And I want you to understand something. Now that you're in a season where your faith is going to have to be developed to be able to take on the things that is coming in this season and even the good things. Because the good things are going to come, but they're going to look like they're not good. You're going to be able to see through. you got to have discernment. Amen. you got to have discernment. So, our base scripture tonight uh, we will be coming from Mark uh, eleven twenty three, and 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 in the scripture eleven twenty three twenty four, and Jesus said unto them, If you have faith in God, you can say to any mountain, Move henceforth, and the mountain shall be moved. Amen. He didn't say nothing about climate. He said, in speaking to it, it shall be moved. All right? This is the season of developing extraordinary faith. He said, have faith in God. That means to have the God kind of faith. And do you not know that uh, each one of you has been given the God kind of faith? It's the best the God kind of faith. The God kind of faith. Each one of you have been given a measure of the God kind of faith. But he said this here. He said that he said that when you stand praying, believe that you have those things that you say and that you receive them. And this is important. And he said, well, I say, whatsoever, you know, real faith comes from the heart. And, and he turns around and said that whatever you say, you can have. But the conditions is you got to believe with your heart. Amen. Now, we, we, we must understand that, you know, even the God kind of faith, God called those things that's not as though they were. He called. He called. And can I tell you something? You're going to have to call. I'm going to break down your anatomy and how you may spiritually and everything tonight. Because I believe that once we begin to understand who we really are and begin to understand that we are operating by the God kind of faith, I believe then we can start to, to, to dominate just like it was always meant to be. What the scripture said in Genesis, he said, let us make man in our image and likeness. And let, let them have dominion. Let them dominate. Amen. Dominion. Dominion means authority. Same way we get the word in the New Testament. It means authority. In other words, anything that Adam spoke fell in line with what Adam said. And I come to tell you, you've been restored back. Now, most people don't understand why they got a voice, why they got words coming out their mouth. They don't really understand it. See, they don't really understand. They don't really understand. Now, the scripture says 
here that, that when God, when Adam laid on the ground a lifeless body, the scripture said that he blew uh, the breath of life into him and he became a living soul. Well, the original Greek writing says that when he blew the breath of life in him, he became a speaking spirit. Look it up in Hebrew. He became a speaking spirit. He was made in God's image, right? So God talks. So God made him to talk like he talked. God made you to talk. But you're supposed to be talking like him. Not talking like the devil wants you to talk. Not talking like your circumstance wants you to talk. Are y'all following me? See? So, what, what you have to do, and you have to understand, God bless you, Pastor Bush. But you have to understand tonight that God made you to speak. You are a speaking spirit. You're a speaking spirit. See, people say, well, Apostle, a parrot, he talks. A parrot can't formulate sentences, and God didn't make him that way. He can mock you, but he can't create sentences. He started creating sentences. It's time to get him out of there. <laughs> it's time for him to go. He come on and have a conversation with you. Something in that parrot ain't right. But I'm just saying. God made you. To. Um, speak. Now. Why, why am I. See we talking about faith. We're talking about faith. Number one. Your faith. Your, your 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 words give substance to your faith. I say it again. Your words give substance to your faith. Hebrews eleven says, "Now faith is the substance of things hoped for." So now faith becomes substance. What is substance? Think about a water bottle. If there is no water in the bottle, the bottle has no substance. But if there's water in the bottle, that means that the water is the substance that's in the bottle. And it's reality. Y'all see that? So in the same way. Um, in the same way. Your faith becomes whatever it is that you're praying for. Whatever Mark 11 say, when you stand praying, believe that you have them things when you pray. See, you're supposed to, when you pray, you're supposed to believe that you have what you say. That's why you don't have to keep going back asking God the same thing over and over. Because if something is done, it's done. Do, do this make sense? Because it's done. So many people got into this religious mode to, I'm going to wear God down. I'm going to keep asking and asking. No. That's unbelief. They get that from the story with the unjust judge. But that, that was not talking about that. Talking about wearing God down. When, 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 when you pray and you receive something in faith, what happens is the Holy Spirit confirms that it's done. And when he confirms that it's done, that's all you have to go. You don't have to go back asking. Every time you think about it, you just praise God. Y'all see that? Every time you think about it, you praise God. Amen. You don't get back. Oh, I'm going back in the closet again. No. If you're going to go back in there, start praising God while you're in there about it. Amen. And it's, and it's amazing. It's, it very, it's very interesting that, that we have to really understand what, 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 what real faith is. And real faith is of the heart. See, you can have doubt in your head, but long as faith is in your heart, it'll override that doubt every time. See, now, Jesus talked about the heart. He said that, you know, with the heart, the man, Paul said, the man, man believes into salvation. Y'all see that? So Jesus said, the heart, what's in a man, he says, not what goes in that defile a man, but it's what comes out. And what comes from the heart is he began to name a whole host of evil things. The mommy you know the, the word of God said that the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Now that's talking about the undisciplined, 
uncreated human spirit. Y'all see that? It's enough we got when we get saved, we got to work on our human spirit. We, we got to work on ourselves, you know, it, you know. We, 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 you know, so Paul said, I die daily. So, but now we understand this here. But now faith, when it comes down to believing God, your emotions cannot get in your way. That's what's wrong with too many people. Their emotions get in the way. And real faith is from the heart. It, 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 don't, it don't operate by your emotions. The Bible said we walk by faith, not by sight. It doesn't work by what you see, feel, or hear. None of your five senses. Real faith is of the heart. See, that's why you have to get the word in your heart, in your human spirit. So that when you release them words, they come out with faith. They don't come out with unbelief. See, they come out with faith. And when they come out with faith, they release energy. We call those things as not as though they were. We call. See, when that energy of faith come out of you, it starts calling things. It starts forcing things to get in line. The Bible talks about the force of faith. You got to understand the force of faith. Faith, when it gets so forceful, forceful. And it's in your human spirit. And you believe it. And when you release it, you release them words with force. You have to release words. I never forget one time I had a bill. And I and I don't know, that Friday, I just hollered out. I'll have it by Monday. And left. And left it alone. Do you know what happened? That Monday morning, I got a couple of phone calls. And that was the answer to what I spoke. That was the force of faith. I released it with force. See, I released it playing around. But because I believe what I said. That's going to be the key right there. I was sharing with the leaders the other night out here in Texas. I said, you, it's going to be easier to build than what you're thinking. You're thinking that it's going to be hard because of what you went through last time around. You think it's going to be hard to rebuild your church, your businesses, your career? I said, but it's not going to be as hard as you thinking to rebuild. You're not. I don't care what Corona did. I don't care how many folks it left out. I don't care what. It is going, you're, you're going to build, you're going to build in a Solomon period. And I'm going to explain to you what a Solomon period is. The Bible said that when David wanted to build God a house, God told him no. Because he shed it too much blood. He said, but your son Solomon will build the house. Now, I want you to look at this here. The word Solomon means peace. Solemn mm -hmm. means peace. That means that in this season, and this is prophetic, you're going to build in peace. You're not going to have all the nagging forces of hell that was fighting you in them previous times. When you first built your ministry, your business, you went through a lot. But I'm telling you now, you're not going to go through a lot and you're not going to have to go through a lot of dreadfulness in what you're thinking. It's going to be easier to build, like I told them there before. But here's going to be the key. Your ears are going to have to be open to the Holy Spirit. You're going to have to understand how he speaks to you. You've got to know his voice. Can't be getting up to him. Well, something told me. No, you, you got to know the personality of God. That's who it is. Understand that he's the actual person, the personality of God. He is your comforter, your paraclete, your helper. He one that stands beside and assists you. He's there to assist you if you let him. Anybody hear me? I'm going to use the word impulse. Sometimes we don't understand the impulses of the spirit. See? The impulses of the spirit. See, it's easy sometimes for folks to, you know, obey the impulses of the flesh. But the impulses of the spirit is something where you have to be spiritually discerned. Anybody hear me? Now, I, I submit to you tonight. And I tell you again, it's not going to be hard to build as you thinking you are. As it once was. It's not going to be hard for you to buy, purchase, own 
it's not going to be hard. Because you've shifted into a new season. And in this time, your faith will have to shift. Your faith will have to shift. You cannot be afraid to approach buildings, houses, cars. I don't care what it is. You can't be right up talking about, well, I ain't got no money. It ain't even sense me going over there. You got to obey the impulses of the spirit. When it is that God tells you to move, you got to move. With or without money. Now, sometimes it ain't the fact of money. Sometimes it is the fact of favor. Are y'all hearing me? Sometimes it's a fact that you're moving with favor. You're moving with favor. Oh my God. Y'all see that? You're moving with favor. Now, I want you to understand that the breakthrough power of the living God is all on your side. I'm telling you, this is a supernatural season. And I mean, it's supernatural. But see, your faith is going to be in a place to trigger the supernatural. See that? Your faith got to trigger the supernatural. Now, what is the supernatural? The supernatural is the invent is, is when God intervenes. In other words, you're trying to buy a property and it just looks like there's no way to do it. You got nose all the way around. All of a sudden, the Holy Ghost speaks to you. The next thing you know, he tells you what to do. And what he tells you to do might not be real conventional. But then when you do what he say do, it triggers the supernatural. You know why? Because now you got to do it by faith. You got to do it, you know, by faith. You got to do it by faith. And it helps you to, and, and to trigger the supernatural. You all hear me right now. I, I want you to understand that where God is taking many of you too, is a tremendous place. And I want you to understand that it's all about you understanding your assignments in this season and all the things that you have to do too as well. I told y'all you're going to have to understand the assignment. Pay attention to assignments. Don't just be running around taking one day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all. No, you're going to have to understand assignment. What am I supposed to be doing? What is it that I'm supposed to be doing? I realized that this is one of my assignments. I got to teach folks through the media. I got to teach through the media. I got to operate through the media. Glory to God. Now let me share. It's coming together one piece at a time. I want you to understand that in spite of how much stuff the devil that maybe took you through and you went through, don't let that harden your heart to believe God. Are y'all hearing me? Sometimes some, a person gets a house paid off and then God says, you know, it's, now it's time to, to believe for another one. Well, and sometimes preachers go with churches. They, they, pay, they built the church, paid off. Now they sit back with their legs crossed and want a faith war. Whew. Ain't going through that no more. Then God said, no, we got to, bigger, we got to build a bigger building. Uh-oh. We have to build a bigger building. Oh, Lord. It'd be like, God, no. Because you know why they're remembering all the stuff that they went through with to pay that last one off. Maybe you were able to pay your last house off, your last car. And God is telling you to stretch to get another one now. Because for whatever reason, you're going to need another one. It's a new season, a new time. You're going to need uh, just, just different things. And you might have one, but God said we need something greater. Hmm. Oh, my Lord. Do y'all see that? See, God, God is, bless you, Nate. God, God, God is, is stretching us. He's stretching us. Stretching us. Stretching us. You know, he's stretching us. And I mean, he's stretching us. Now, what happens is this here. You, you, you got to understand that stretching is not easy and it ain't comfortable. I used to take martial arts a lot. We used to do a lot of ooh, with martial arts and stretching was not one of my favorite things, but you had to do it. You needed flexibility so you won't pull a muscle. You need to do it now. 
Matter of fact, the older you get, the more you need to do it. You need to stretch every day. Keep keep yourself flexible so you don't pull no muscle or, or, or no tendon or something. Y'all see that? So, but the whole key thing, flexing makes, or stretching makes you flexible. And God is calling for people to be flexible now in faith. See, you, you, your faith just can't be one-sided. You got to be able to stretch through many dimensions. You got to be able to stretch, stretch. Stretching is painful. To be a good kicker, you have to stretch. You, you need to stretch your muscles. And then some of y'all going to have to stretch your faith muscles. You got to stretch your faith muscles. Say, Pastor, well, how I do that? Well, stretching has everything to do with you know, say like reaching for something. You have to stretch to get it. Hmm. Stretching. I want y'all to understand something. That God ain't promised you a bed of roses. But he did say this would, wouldn't be as hard as it was last season. But see, the key is, you're going to have to reach. And when you reach as far as you can reach, then here comes the supernatural. See, most people don't reach as far as they can reach. Do y'all hear me? They don't reach as far as they can reach. I want you to understand something about the supernatural. See, God, God is calling us to stretch. And I do mean stretch. You got to stretch. And it's, and it's going to be painful. Now, say, Pastor, what you mean? Well, you're going to have to stretch, you have to stretch past people's opinions. They're going to formulate opinions of you in this season. They're going to tell you why you shouldn't be doing what you're doing. And that's just taking things too far. You need to settle down. Well, my faith is stretching me. My faith is stretching me. My faith is stretching my company. Stretching my ministry, stretching my career. It's stretching me even to be all that God called me to be. So I have to stretch. Do y'all hear me right now? Hmm. Glory to God. I have to stretch. Some of you out on this line, you're going to have to stretch. See, now, you know, because see, one thing what the devil wants you to do, the devil wants you to stay comfortable. That, that The devil wants you to stay comfortable. That's why, excuse me. That's why he wants you to be at ease. And the Bible says, warn to them who are at ease in Zion. And they sleep on beds of ivory. See, there's a comfortable mindset that the enemy will try to put you in. He will try to put you in a comfortable mindset. And he wants you to get comfortable. Because when you get comfortable, that means then you don't really put forth as much effort as you're supposed to. Does this make any sense? So you, you have to be aware of that mindset of comfortability. Complacency. Complacency means self-satisfied. You, you have to get to a place where you're not satisfied self-satisfied do y'all hear me you 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 some people are in a place where i'm i'm cool right here don't need nobody to bother me the devil ain't messing with me i'm cool right here they ain't talking about me they ain't reviling me they ain't persecuting me i'm cool right here but you're not you need to be in a place where you're being challenged because the Bible said that persecution will rise because of the word. And any time, time you start obeying the word, persecution is going to rise. What is persecution? Persecution is being reviled for what you believe. And all the enemy is trying to do is to get you to take down off the word of God. And get you to believe the mess that's going on around you. Getting you to believe the stuff that he didn't spoke and he, that's going on in your head. Are y'all hearing me? So what you have to do is you have to rule out and, and, you, and you can't afford to come down. 
Y'all hear me? You can't afford to come down like Nehemiah said. I'm doing a good work on the wall. Why should I come down? He said they sent false prophets. They sent messengers, letters, and everything to try to stop them from building that wall. <coughs> but Nehemiah said, they sought to frustrate our purpose. The devil is out to frustrate your purpose. I don't know who I'm talking to. He wants to antagonize you to the place to where and one of the first ways you do it is tell he tells you it's taking too long and then he starts to throw aggravation in there with it you start getting frustrated because it looks like it's taking longer than what you anticipate or what you want to take what you got to understand God is not only just trying to do that he's doing things inside of you that's why it's taking as long as it takes because you saying, Lord, why is it taking long to send me my husband? Because he's trying to make sure everything is right inside of you. So when the husband comes, he'll stay there with you. And you won't write him off. Uh-oh. The wife comes, you won't run off. See that? Oh, Lord, when my kids going to come to church? When you get that nagging spirit out of you. Always beating them across the head with the Bible. Now, you knew was raised like you. You know better than it. No. And that's what's keeping them away. God's trying to get that out of you. God's trying to get it in. When they come in, you just love them. They're going to make mistakes. Don't persecute them for every little mistake. Talk, you know, not persecute, but just don't don't nag them and get on them for every little state, mistake. That's what a lot of folks run their husband right back out of the door. See, people don't grow according to your standards and your pace. The pace you think they're supposed to grow. You didn't grow. And God's still patient with you. Y'all see that? that, that there's things that, that that God is doing. And, and, and God, is, God is patient with you. I want you to understand that. Now, if I'm going to really develop this type of faith in this season, I got to get forceful because this is a time now we got to, this coming into July, these next six months, we got to push some stuff on out. We got to push businesses out. We got to push new ministries out. We got to push out. Do y'all hear me? Birth. Push the stuff out. Amen. That's why you're in so much pain. That's why you're hurting. Because it's time to push. You've dilated to the, the, the level of pushing now. Time for the baby to come on out now. Y'all ain't going to talk right now. I said it's time for the baby to come on out. The baby's ready to come out. That ministry ready to come out. That's why you're hurting so bad. That that, that business ready to come out. It's got too big for the, for, it, for the womb. And you sitting there, oh, I don't think I'm. You got, you got to get up and you have to push. Do y'all hear me? The apostle, how to do that? Well, you push by listening to the Holy Spirit and getting yourself up and doing what he tells you to do. He tells you to get up, take a ride, and go so and so, so and so. You get up and do what the Holy Spirit says do. Now, and this is where most of us get sidetracked at because we feel like we don't have what it takes to obtain or do whatever it is. You know, I, in my next, uh, in this media center, it's going to be a huge place. I'm not measuring it by my bank account. I'm not measuring it by my money. I'm not measuring it. The Bible says it's not by might nor by power. But it's by my spirit, said the Lord. I'm not measuring anything by, by, uh, by any of my standards. This is all based on the power of God. This is supernatural. We are in a supernatural season. I, I just believe that the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to flow like never before. And let me say this here. Hmm. Now, God made you to be a speaking spirit. He made you to speak. And many people are using their voices for the wrong reason. 
to speak doubt, unbelief, cuss people out, nag folks, just joking all the time, and that's all you do. And you say you're playing, but your mind don't know you ain't playing. Saying stuff like, I'm so broke, I can't pay attention. I'm broker than the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. We are supposed to use our mouth to call those things that's not as though they were. That's what the fourth chapter of Galatians say. We must call those things that's not as though they were. If you don't call, it's not going to come. And if you don't call in faith, it ain't coming. So now, that's why the Bible said faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That's why you have to get in, you have to listen to the word of faith. Keep listening to teaching like this. Keep listening how to build your faith. See, just keep listening how to build your faith. And what happens is, the words start getting down in you. Now, what has to happen is for a while, you know, that unbelief is going to come up out of you. When you've been sitting around religious settings and religious places, that 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 unbelief that it's got to come out of you. It's going to take you listening to the word for a while. Because that word got to get in your subconscious state. And when it gets in your subconscious mind, that's what's going to be coming out your mouth. You, you, when you get sick, you ain't going to say, oh, take me to Walgreens. No, you, you're going to be saying, you know what? The Lord is my healer. I'm not telling you not go to Walgreens and get you some tired on I ain't saying that. But your first impulse is going to be the word. Why is it God is the last one that we call when he should be the first one we consult? Are y'all hearing me? See, we need to be, he needs to be the first one. He needs to be able to tell you. If you need to go to the hospital, he might tell you, go to the hospital, get checked out. But then he might, then, then in some cases you might not need to go. Because he, he might tell you what's wrong with you. I remember a lady, uh, was having problems at church and telling her, I'm going to the emergency room. I said, no, that's nothing but stress. That number stress. But your chest turned is stress. He said, I'm going anyway. I said, go on, I'm going to go. Now, she went to the emergency room and ran up a big bill. And had she consulted God and God confirmed what I said to her, she wouldn't have to run that big bill up. Cause they got to, she got to the hospital, they checked out, and they said, "Ma'am, it's stress." I had already told her. The Holy Ghost had showed it to me. Y'all see that? See, what what I'm trying to show you something here today. See, God should be the first one that we consult, but He most time is the last one. You call people, call your prayer, word, call the pastor, call everybody, but God first. Y'all see that? You're going to have to learn to get so dependent on God until he's the first one. I don't know about you, but he's the first one I call. I, you know, I'm not both and bragging, but I, I rarely call people. Rarely. I like calling people for prayer and all that, no. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm above that, and I appreciate when people do pray for me. But my first line of defense is calling on the name of the Lord. Now, if, if not, when, when he, uh, now, if he tells me to call somebody... I will. But in most cases, I pray in the Holy Ghost. And whatever it is the enemy trying to bug me with, I shoot it right down through the power of God. See, you got to grow to that point. I grew to that point. And I trained myself young that, that I would always seek God first. I would pray. My Godmother said, take, pray. If you got to walk and pray. If you got, I was traveling with some evangelists one time. And we was all in the hotel. And what I did was many days... I, I had two places I pray. Number one, I lock myself in the bathroom. Like, you know, I'm using the bathroom and I pray. And number two, I'd get out and I'd walk and pray by myself. I became so dependent on prayer and like I am now. I'm dependent on praying. I'm dependent on God. Glory to God. And sometimes God tells me things that might seem so far away and so far off and like it can't happen. But you know something? God is a God that don't lie. If he said it, it shall come to pass. God will leave people mouth wide open. That's why you shouldn't be scared to say what God told you he's going to do. 
Don't you be scared to call those things that's not as though they were. Don't you be afraid to, to confess and affirm your own life that you're a millionaire. Don't you be afraid. Don't be, oh, he come with all that little mess again. No, don't you, I don't care who don't want to hear it. I tell folks, you don't want to hear it, just get away from around me. Because I'm going to constantly affirm myself. Yes, I'm a rich man. Yes, I'm a blessed man. Yes, I have the power of God in me. Yes, I have everything that I need. Yes, I have peace. Yes, I have joy. Yes, I have happiness. Yes, I have contentment. See, I, I just affirm myself. Some of you going to have to get into affirming, speaking affirmation. Y'all so busy waiting on confirmation. Uh-oh. You waiting on confirmation. You better get into being into affirmation, affirming your mind with the word of God. Because the word of God is true. Affirm your mind with the truth so your mind will start believing it. It get all down in your subconscious and can't nobody tell you that you are not a millionaire. So I said, well, yeah, how about them bills you still got? Them bills don't change the word of God, but the word will change them bills. Are y'all listening? See that? I don't regularly call you drive. That car don't change the word, but the word will change that car. Well, you say you're going to live in a mansion. You're still in that one-bedroom apartment. That one-bedroom apartment don't change the word. But the word will change that one-bedroom apartment into a 10,000-square-foot house. I wish I had somebody right now. You got to learn how to affirm yourself. God is already... The word blessed means supernaturally empowered to prosper. And it means, I told y'all from the uh, the uh, Hebrew, Hebrew word, Yorah, where we get the, the uh, English word eulogy from, means to say something good over somebody. God has already spoken something good over you. It's already done. Y'all hear me? Glory to God. It's already done. He's spoken it over you. Now, if the Bible plainly tells us that if God be for us, who then can be against us? Who can prevail over us? Who can stop us? Oh, but the devil, he's so powerful. Great is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Greater than the world of flesh and the devil. Do y'all hear me? See? I got the greater one in me. I got the Christ, the Christ though, within me. The anointed one, his anointing. I'm anointed. To, I'm anointed for this. I have authority. Come on, somebody. I said I have authority. And there's some of you right now, cocktail the boot shot. You've got authority. The anointing is upon you and it's in you. The enemy knows because when he see you coming, he see it on you. He just don't want you to believe in it. They all hear me? He don't want you to really believe how strong it is and that, that it can subdue him. And any one of his imps or any one of his, 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 his cohorts. Come on, somebody. Do y'all see that? I'm telling y'all. You, 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 this is a season of time now where you got to become violent in faith. The Bible said that the kingdom of heaven take it by violence. Uh, 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 suffer violence and the violent take it by force. It suffers violence. That that means that this means resilience to keep coming. I don't care what's coming at you, what's resisting you, long as you do what the scriptures say, submitting yourself to God in the book of James, and then resist the devil. Then he will flee. You cannot resist a devil if you're going along with him. If you're in unbelief, I am him. You can't resist the devil. Resist means to put up a fight. You get in unbelief. You surrender and say, okay, Mr. Devil, here I am right now. You you surrendering to the devil. It didn't say nothing about surrendering. It said resist. Resist means to put up a fight. Just like just like when when you are uh fighting the police because you don't want to be arrested. That's called resisting arrest. You're putting up a struggle, putting up a fight. 
Many people not even putting up no struggle. They ain't putting up no fight. They just, oh, I'm just so depressed today. I tell y'all, y'all pray for me. No, you, 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 you are surrendering to the devil. You're saying what he wants you to say. You're acting like he wants you to act. You better get up and shout. This is the day the Lord has made. I know you ain't gonna. You don't feel like doing it. I know you don't feel like. But Pastor, I just don't feel. I know you don't. This thing. This thing ain't operating by your feelings. This means you got to get on up. And give God praise. You got to get up and worship God. Get up, pray in the Holy Ghost. Get up and say, this is the day the Lord made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. <clears throat> in other words, I'm going to make God bigger than my circumstance. See, I wish I had somebody right now. I'm going to make God bigger than what I'm going through. I'm on magnet. That's what a magnifying glass do. It, it magnifies. And God, and I believe David said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let's make him bigger than anything that we're going through. Come on here. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Some of y'all things going to happen so fast, it's going to make your head spin. This is why you don't need to be trying to get ready to get in faith. You need to be in faith. You don't get in faith when you're trying to get the car. Be in faith before you get the before you get to the car lot. Be proactive. Are y'all hearing me? Mm. Be proactive. Pro means before. Are y'all hearing me? Pro means before. That means that I've done necessary things to build my faith. Before I approach anything, my faith is built. I'm not trying to get faith that I already, I've listened to the word. I read the word. I muttered the word. I meditate, mean mutter. I mean, been speaking under my voice, muttering. Like some of y'all used to talk back, talk back to your mama. And on your, he said, well, what you, what you say, girl? I ain't say nothing, mom. But you was muttering under your voice. Muttering. Sometimes you have to muddle the word. You had work to sometimes just muddle the word. Y'all hear me right now? Oh my God, I feel the power of God. Now, you 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 got to really understand this here tonight. See, that where God's taking you to is an awesome place in this season. This quadro, this moment of time. This moment of time. Oh my goodness. This moment in time. That means that something specific has to happen in this moment of time. This quadros moment. Something has to happen in this moment of time. Doors, windows are open in this moment. of, And this is a season and it's carrying a purpose, a unique purpose. Y'all hear me? We talked about fear. See, now I'm talking to you about developing dynamic faith. Dynamic faith is faith that explodes. Faith that, that, that blows stuff up when on contact. Demons been in your way. Boom, that faith hit them forces and boom, blow everything up. Everything that they've been doing. I want y'all to understand this here. God is putting force in you. The force of faith. Dynamic faith. Ooh, your faith will grow exceedingly. Exceedingly growing faith. This is the time now you need to anchor down and listen to that word. You need to listen to this maybe two or three times even before you know we come back on again. You need to listen to this over and over and over. Repeat it. Repetition. Repetition brings on automation. I mean automation brings, you know, repetition brings on automation. Which means that you can get these principles operating in your mind, see, getting them operating automatically. In other words, instead of panicking, your faith rises up. Fear don't rise up. Mm. Remember, you're speaking spirit. Remember, you just like God. When God wanted the world, what did he do? Do we understand that the world was framed together by faith and by the word of God? 
So things which do appear are made of things that don't appear. Greatest miracles appear from nothing but a spoken word. Oh my God, y'all, y'all, y'all. I said greatest, the greatest miracles appear from nothing but the spoken word. That's why God put the power of the spoken word in you. To call those things is not. He gave you a voice. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. In your tongue is death and life. Whatever you choose to give birth to, death or life, is your choice. And we tell me, oh, the devil made me say, no, the devil ain't made you say nothing. It was already down inside of you. It needed to be worked out. It needs to come out. Unbelief needs to come out. All that mess that you've been listening to and all that religious stuff, that stuff needs to come out. He might not come when you want him, but he always, he comes every time I call him. Time I call him. So, but, but you didn't see, you didn't see he did. No, I, I know what he did. Because time I call him, he told me he did it. Uh-oh. But I don't see it. I don't care what you don't see. Time, God, time, oh my God. You call. He was there. Somebody said, but why he didn't get there when Lazarus died? The same reason why he ain't manifest himself right now for you. Because he waiting on something inside of you to die. Uh -oh. He done done it. But he want that thing to come out of you so that you don't mess it up. Y'all see that? <clears throat> he wants to get the glory out of Like he got out of Lazarus. Like, like he got, you know. He said, well, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. He, Jesus knows to say, I'm glad I wasn't here. So that the power of God may be manifested. Sometimes he'll tell you that I'm glad I didn't do it. I'm glad I didn't physically manifest it. I did it. But I'm glad I didn't let you or nobody else see it yet. Uh-oh. Because I don't want you or nobody else taking credit. I want when this happens, nobody can point their hand to nobody but me. Y'all hear me? That, oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I want you to really understand this here tonight. The, the dynamics of faith, the force of faith, dynamite, explosiveness in faith. Some of y'all in this, you're going to get so strong in faith, you're going to be ready to slap a bear. You, you, you're going to be so strong in faith until there ain't nothing, until the special gift of faith from out the spirit realm start manifesting. See, we, see, you got, you got the, uh, you got the God time kind of faith, which causes things to do, do they work. Got the force of faith. Now here comes special faith. Special faith is one of the power gifts. Faith, healing, and miracles. Faith, healing, and miracle. That is one of the power gifts or one of the abilities of the Holy Spirit. That's when God anoints you to believe. Uh oh. When you show up, you showing up with an anointing. You ain't just believing, but you showing up with an anointing. And that is just like it heals, work miracles. It's a power gift. It does something. See, three of the gifts see something. Three, three of the gifts, you know, say something. And three of the gifts do something. And one of and the power gifts of faith, it does something. It'll make a sickness come out of a body. Oh, y'all ain't talking. It'll make somebody turn a real estate property over to you. It'll make somebody give you a car. Are oh, y'all hear me? I've had it happen. <clears throat> It'll make a disease come out of a body. That's when that special gift of faith, and you, and you start moving in that special faith, you lay hands on somebody's body has been aided with cancer. The power of God will start to revitalize every cell in their body. Y'all hear me right now. 
God's trying to raise some of y'all up to be so powerful and so explosive until that the enemy is going to hate to see you coming. Because when you come, you're going to disrupt atmospheres. You're going to shift atmospheres. You, you, you're, you're coming with faith. You're coming. People, legs are going to grow out. Sinners going to get saved. Those ones that people been trying to get saved for years is going to come to the altar. Going to get a life. When that, when that, when when you come with that anointing, I prophesy, I, and, I, and and one of these sessions I'm about to teach about the anointing of the next season, the anointing of the next season. See the faith of the next season. I'm talking to you tonight. It is a forceful type of faith. It is a faith that, that gets to the point that okay, okay, I've been waiting on God. Now it's time to move. Holy Spirit, give me my instructions. I'm ready to move now. I'm ready to go out and conquer. I'm ready to get my house. I'm ready to get my car. I'm ready for my ministry to come forth. I'm ready to start pulling these sinners in off the streets. These unchurched folks. Tired of all these recycled church people. I'm ready now to start to pull these people into the kingdom of God. Teach them the kingdom way. Teach them the way how to operate in the things of God. I'm telling y'all, I feel force. I feel faith for the next season. This season that we in now, you're going to get up. This July, you're going to get up and you're going to start making things happen. You are going to get up and start making things happen. I promise you. Go by my masha. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. I speak that right now. See, you don't understand who you are. See, I want you to understand that. I want you to know that in this season here, there's a level of faith that you're going to move to you ain't never been. You're going to do some exploits, some great things. You're going you're gonna to do some great things, great exploits, great exploits. Mm-hmm. Things been trying to hold on to your body. Okay, with diabetes, blood pressure, uh, uh, circulational issues, whatever. It's got to let you go in Jesus' name. I feel the force of faith in here tonight. Financial issues. I said financial issues. They got to let go. Especially you that have been sowing. And your tithers. See, don't just tie it and sow and then mess the 90% of your money up. Uh-oh. Get a plan to do with the 90%. I know you got to pay bills, but there should be something left for you to start growing wealth with. Saving. And not just saving it, but starting to put it in investments and growing wealth. Well, you saving for a four-unit apartment building or what? Are you saving for putting your stock portfolio Whatever. Mm. I'm telling y'all right now. I said I'm telling you now. That nothing shall be impossible. Yeah. This is the season. This is the time now. Oh yeah. Yes Lord. I'm going to minister to some. You tonight. That I see still on here. And I ask all y'all that can sow a seed, as we always do. If you can sow something tonight, sow something. Whatever it is, if God tell you to sow is $21. If it's $100, I don't know. Whatever God tells you to sow tonight, I ask all y'all to sow. Whatever he tells you to sow, glory to God. Whatever he put in your heart to sow. Now pray and ask him what it is that you want. That, that, you know, that he want you to give tonight. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Pastor Pam, are you still there? Are you still there, Pastor Pam? Say amen if he is. Because I, I can't see your face at the top of the screen. That's why I'm asking. Say amen if you're there. Not I'll wait till you. I believe you'll probably get back on. Thank you, Lord God. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. 
Yeah, there you go. Pastor Pam, God told me to tell you, he said that he is redoing some things, reconfiguring some things. I don't know what it is, but he's reconfiguring. He's reconstructing something. And the Lord said, as I reconstruct this here, that I'm going to cause functionality to a much higher level. And I'm going to do some things that is going to be so productive. Might not look like it at first. But I'm going to relieve you of a lot of stress. And I hear God saying this. He said in this hour, there's going to be an open door like never before. Because the Lord said this. I'm pouring out. And I'm opening the windows of heaven for new concepts, new ideas. Glow my shot by my myself. And I, and I hear God saying that nothing shall be impossible. Pastor Pam, I feel a miracle with your name written on it. I see some finances. But I also see an anointing. That in this season of ministry, God is re-anointing you all over again. He's re-anointing you all over again. There's a re-anointing. A re-anointing. A re-anointing. I know he said there's a re-anointing. But he said, I'm going to baptize you in fire. Your ministry is going to get stronger than it's ever been before. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Hmm. Surreal. Surreal, the Lord told me to tell you, he said, embrace his word like never before. There's been a struggle for a while. But the Lord said, daughter, believe me that I'm greater than the struggle. Believe me that I'm greater than the struggle. I heard him say, believe me that I'm greater than the struggle. And so real, the Lord said, this. he said, I'm giving you the answer to some things. Because look like stuff go backward for a while. But God told me to tell you, things are getting ready to go forward. And nothing shall be impossible. That thing you were dealing with the other day. God told me to tell you, I'm going to bring some closure to it. And I'm going to fix everything to where the way it's supposed to be. And nothing is going to be impossible, said the Lord. Hmm. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hmm. Yes, Lord. Pastor, Pastor Bush, are you there? Pastor Bush, are you there? Christian Bush, Pastor Bush, I think I see you up there. But Pastor Bush, the Lord said that he is overturning some things. He's overturning some things. And I hear Pastor Bush, the Lord said that I'm going to give you a cheerfulness that you haven't had in a while. And I'm going to put a joy down inside of you that you have never, you, actually you, this joy, God gave me put down in you, it is a deep level of confidence. And I heard God say this here. There's some with a property he's working out. And God said, don't be afraid to approach nothing. Approach anything with confidence that I tell you. That's what that joy is. It's all about the confidence. See, in, the, in Hebrew, the Greek word joy means voice. It means confidence in whatever God said he can do. And confidence when you put all your weight down on something. God said there's a special real estate deal being worked out. There's a special real estate deal that's going to be worked out. God said the legacy of your dream and everything, vision, it's going to come forth. And I hear God said every spirit of confusion has to cease. This is the time now for peace. And the Lord said, get ready, woman of God, because I am moving like never before. Close shot, talalabama shot. Hmm. God said, you too, there's a stronger level of the anointing. There's a revitalization in your physical body. God revitalizing all your cells and everything. Energy. Energy, energy, energy. Oh, glory to God. Energy, Pastor Bush. Energy. Oh, God, we thank you. And there, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Woo. Thank you, Lord. 
Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Spirit. Anita, my cousin, God told me to tell you, say, get ready. It's getting ready to happen. Get ready to go down. The Lord said, prepare all your business proposals, all your paperwork. Get everything together intact. Because God told me to tell you, I'm about to trigger some deals that only I can. Yes. And I hear God say, I'm going to take care of your family. He said, but I'm going to make you to shine out now the season because if you to shine out. And God said, all the financial difficulties are going to be behind you. And I told you, you got to be wise with your money. Because we're not going to let the devil can't go warm it up. Through people that don't want to be responsible with, for their money. Yeah, you're going to help some folks. But God told me to tell you, he said, get ready. Things are turning, cuz. They are turning. What should I tell you? In Jesus' name. Mm, glory to God. Mm. Shayla, my masa, my mm. casa. I got to feel the power of God. Feel the Holy Ghost. Lobo Moshe, Bando, Babakosa. Once again, everyone that can sow a seed, sow whatever you can sow. If it's $21 tonight, if it's 31 if it's 100 I don't know what it is. But I want each one of y'all to sow something tonight. So, that can, that have the way of sowing. And, that, and if you have the seed, if you don't have it, I understand. But we just ask that you sow a seed tonight. Mm. Ask that you just sow a seed tonight. Thank you, Lord. Y'all, I tell you, I feel that the Holy Spirit is moving. And nothing shall be impossible. Glow my my shabbat and my mm. I heard the Lord saying this is a season for all back bills to be called up. This is a time of debt freedom. This is a time when the Lord shall begin to command the blessing on you. Each one of y'all listen to me. This is a time of debt freedom. A time that you're going to be able to count to a lot of the debt. But I hear God saying this. He said, tell my people nothing shall be impossible. I feel the time now where accounts will be paid off. Things will be called up. Mm. Glory to God. Many of you are not, not going to go into places in debt. Glory my shot. I'm telling y'all right now. Woo, glory to God. Jay, how you doing, Jay? Jay, the Lord said, get ready because he is going to put the icing on the cake. He's going to put the icing on the cake, Jay. I heard God say this here. Accounting matters. Things are going to be worked out. Taxes. God is working and moving through some things that is going to blow your mind. God said, I'm going to put you so far ahead of the game. It ain't even funny, Jay. The Lord said this here. He said that there's an abundance of finances building up in your spiritual bank account. As you sow, you are building up an account. And this account that you're building up is going to get the overflow method. And I'm telling you, money going to start coming from the north, south, east, and west, Jay. Hmm. God said, because I can trust you to be a kingdom financer. He said, get ready because there was a personal matter that you dealt with. Um, not um, well long. Just a few days. But I heard God say this. He said that I'm going to give you all the answers and everything that is needed. And the Lord said, and nothing shall be impossible. There's a big breakthrough. And I mean a big breakthrough. Big, big breakthrough, Jay. And nothing shall be impossible. Tonight, I feel a miracle. I feel a breakthrough. Oh, shout out master. I said, I feel a breakthrough tonight. Supernaturally. The hand of the Lord is moving. Oh, thank you, Lord. And those people you praying for, God said, you just watch. I'm going to honor your prayer and I'm going to answer your prayers concerning them and nothing shall be impossible said the Lord <clears throat> oh glory mm. oh by my masha oh thank you Lord God mm. Mm. 
My Lord. Klike Shaba Mama Sa. Kalando do Loboko Shaba. Remember, everyone, so whatever the Lord leads you to so, sow, what he put on your heart, so whatever God leads on your heart to so, sow. Those that can sow 21, 31, 100, 50, whatever it is you can do, 75, 100, I don't know. Whatever you do, let God lead you in your sowing tonight. And I ask each one of you that can sow a seed, sow. Amen. We coming to this month of July. I'm telling y'all. We are moving like never before. Global, my, 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 sada, la, la, ba, sha. Mm, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glow, sha, la, la, ba, my, sa. Mm, glory. K, la, la, ba, ma, ma, shanda. La, ba, ma, se, ba, 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 ando, la, ba, ko, sa. La, ko, ba, ma, sha, ba, ma, ando, do, la, ba, ka, sa. Glaba mama, shando no lama kose bene. Woo, glory to God. Thank you, Father. Mm, I feel the strength of the anointed. Mm. Glaba mama, shan. I feel the strength of the anointed. Mm. He told Solomon, shan. Oh, thank you. The breakthrough power is here tonight, y'all. I feel the breakthrough power tonight. I said, I feel the breakthrough power tonight. Lord, I command a breakthrough to flow upon the people of God, flow around them tonight. Let that anointing, Lama Kosha, <coughs> flow upon each one. I command that anointing to go over all the airways, cover them, touch them. I command sicknesses that's trying to come against them, anything that's coming against them. No weapon formed against them shall prosper. Tonight, God, I thank you. I love Osha, Lucy, anointing now, over the airways now. I loose it over YouTube. I loose it over Facebook Live. I command the flow of power now to come forth. Thank you, Lord God. Miracle time. And Lord, I give you the praise in Jesus' name. Oh, God, I bless you, man. Mm. Thank you for the release, Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh, glory. Mm, glory. Remember, each one of you, let the Lord speak to your heart and your sowing and in your giving. I'm just sensing the power of God in the presence of the Lord. I sent to them a strong way tonight. Glow my Shabbat Dodola Bosa. Glow Shalala Mama Masa. Oh God, we thank you now. Glow by Mama Shandola Bosa. Oh God, we just thank you now. I said thank you now. Hallelujah. Bless you. Bless you, Pastor Bush. Thank you. I love my coach, Shanda. Thank all y'all that for so, all y'all for your sowing and all your giving that you always do. We appreciate it. Amen. Glow by my Shanda, Lord by Shanda. Oh, God, we thank you now. Kingdom Way Empowerment Ministries, we, yeah, we appreciate each one. I feel the power of God right now. It's on me. And, and it's releasing it all over the airwaves. Oh, the ministering spirit is going to be up on each one of you. I tell about coach. Woo. Hmm, glory. Ah, my God, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hmm. Oh, glory. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. We just praise God tonight, y'all. I thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the power of God tonight. I feel so strong on me. We just ask each one of you right now. Amen. Receive what God has done for you tonight. Just receive it tonight in the name of Jesus. Receive it tonight. I said receive it tonight. In the name of Jesus, receive it tonight. In Jesus' name. God bless y'all. Remember, everyone that can sow, sow whatever the Lord leads on your heart to sow. Whatever you have to give. Amen. Don't, don't think if it's a small, if it's $10, don't think it, that'd be small. Don't minimize the seed. Little becomes much in the hands of the master. If it's 21, if it's 31, if it's 100, whatever. 
Glory to God. Don't minimize the seed. Everything is great when you put it in God's hand. And I want y'all to put it in God's hand. All right? Yes. Yes. You know, like one thing, and Jay, the Lord said, it is so. He's approving everything. He's getting everything in writing. He's getting everything done. He said, it is so. That's all I hear him say. It is so. It is so. It's so. In Jesus' name. All right. God bless y'all now. Remember, every one of you hadn't sold, sold something. But we thank God for you tonight, and we give God the praise for this teaching tonight and tomorrow we'll be coming back we'll be talking about the, the dynamics of faith Ma. we're going to be talking about the move of the Holy Spirit and the anointing just how when God spoke the Holy Spirit moved and he started doing things that's why you're going to have to get your, get your faith in line and, get, and, be, and you begin to speak you're a speaking spirit use that ability that God gave you use them vocal cords use that mind to speak and create with and we'll be talking more about that on tomorrow Okay? All right. God bless you guys. I love you. And be prayerful tonight. Amen? God bless. Continue to pray. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you. All right, cuz. Amen. I know you will. God bless y'all.